All right, hey everyone, welcome back to the Barbell Medicine YouTube channel where we bring modern medicine to strength and conditioning and strength and conditioning to modern medicine. I'm your host, Dr. Jordan Feigenbaum. We're at Coronado Beach, San Diego. I literally just got off the golf course, hence the attire. It's also sunset slash golden hour, but the beach is closed. I wanted to get on the beach, but it's closed. This was supposed to be on the beach, but they closed it on oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Let's get to your questions. All right, so the question is what to do if one lift isn't responding. Um, so yeah, if the other two lifts or whatever lifts you're deeming are important are responding, I probably wouldn't do anything about it in that particular training block. But as far as what you go, what you do, um, the next step, the next training block, I typically like to go uh, pretty extreme with the changes, meaning that if the exercise variation was relatively small, I wanna go large. If the volume was relatively low, I wanna go up. But I wanna build up to that over time, but I wanna make a substantial enough change that we get things moving in the right direction if we made a change that the person's gonna respond to. So it's not necessarily just tweak one little thing, because um, you're really a different organism at the start of that next block anyway. So I like to make pretty substantial changes, uh, even if it takes some time to gradually work into that. Um, but yeah, I'm looking at exercise variation, I'm looking total volume. Um, if we're looking at maximal strength type stuff, then I also want to look at total average intensity. I might ramp that up uh, depending on the previous training um, and training history and lifter preferences, um, or I might uh, go down. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> there's no one answer, um, but typically my first moves are going to be exercise variation and volume for the most part, provided that they were actually used training um, uh, appropriately before. The question is, what is my the most commonly asked question? And honestly, uh, you know, if we compile all the Instagram lives, all the emails, all the everything that we get, it's gonna be, I have this injury, what do? Dr. Baraki did create a great resource called Pain and Training, What Do? So I linked that in the description below. You should check that out. If you do have uh, an injury, then you're like, I'm not sure what to do. That's where you start. Um, and also we do offer these pain and rehab consultations. And I, I know it seems like I'm just shilling for barbell medicine, but the thing is this, if training, uh, and physical activity is your sport that you uh, you know choose to pursue, or it's you know your recreational hobby that you care a lot about. Um, being absent of that or being missing that for an extended period of time due to an injury, or you know as a lot of people are realizing now, uh, potentially a pandemic, um, really uh, can upset your life. And so I think if this is one of those things that's super important to you and you can't find a way to get on uh, the path back to normal activity, normal training normal competition, um, having some professionals guide you would be the way to do it. You're still running 20% off sales there, so uh, would recommend contacting us through our email, support at barbellmedicine.com. Honorable mention for the second most common question that I always get asked is, uh, what shoes are those whenever we're deadlifting? Look, they're Nike Davinos, they're indoor soccer shoes. Um, <laughs> I don't think they make them anymore, and I don't think that they're gonna make anybody pull a lot more weight. I just wanted a flat shoe um, that was pretty thin. Um, I didn't really like uh, deadlifting in chucks. I hated deadlifting in slippers, um, and so I just picked up some indoor soccer shoes. Uh, Austin actually used to train in Sambas until he saw my Davinos, and he was like, what are those? So the question is why barbell training? And look, the name is barbell medicine, so it's not we can't really recommend kettlebells or machines, machine medicine. I mean, people always already think machine medicine's a big machine. No, uh, but seriously though, I, I think there's some maybe unique benefits to barbell training, particularly with a balance component that you don't see with machines. Um, but you know, that's not just relegated to barbell training. You can do that with dumbbell training or other free weights, free implements. So in reality, I don't think that barbells are like the best training tool to use. I think rather whatever somebody has access to resource wise. And so again, this is being like widely exemplified by people not having access to all the particular equipment that they want during this pandemic. So whatever you have access to, that's important. And then whatever you want to do that promotes adherence, that's those are gonna be the two biggest things with actually, you know, exercise selection. If you are a competitive athlete, particularly in a barbell sport, sure, you're gonna have to do most of your training with a barbell. Um, no, no way around that. But you know, that's the sport you chose and 
so obviously you like barbells, but if you're not a barbell sport athlete, I, you could make a case for having somebody do a completely machine-based training program or kettlebell-based training program if they want, uh, if they prefer that, if they have access to those things. I think the biggest things that barbells have going for them are that they're relatively inexpensive, they're relatively widely available when gyms are open, you can incrementally load them without a lot of extra you know, things, so like you, it's hard to incrementally load a kettlebell with respect to weight without having a ton of different kettlebells and so maybe for the budget you know minded uh, individual or facility yeah you can make a case for barbells but I also think you know there's stuff uh, that's uniquely beneficial to machines particularly entry points for people who may be intimidated by by barbells so it doesn't mean that you can never use barbells for those individuals if they prefer using machines on the front end but again the major thing is increasing the physical activity participation rates and that's going to be based on whatever somebody has access to and whatever they prefer. All right, what is my favorite thing about working for Barbell Medicine? So I started this thing uh, in 2012-ish. Um, and honestly, this is bigger, it's grown bigger than I ever thought it was going to. I thought it was gonna be mostly just me, you know, kind of doing some consultation work or, you know, providing information for folks, educational resources. And now that it's bigger than just me and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, I think that's really what's the most rewarding thing for me is seeing it grow and also just in the right way because effectively it just gives us a bigger microphone to kind of promote uh, positive change in our community whether that's improving folks self-efficacy improving physical activity participation improving uh, uh, lifestyle intervention sort of adherence um, improving outcomes uh, by educating other clinicians so that's the coolest thing our microphone's way bigger now and that's the whole goal get the microphone get the platform as big as possible so we can positively affect as many folks as possible All right, so the question is, favorite Keanu Reeves movie? This was a fan favorite. Um, all right, so look, I got a bunch of recommendations to go watch Point Break, and I, look, there's a love story, there's like some crime, there's like some mystery stuff, uh, there's fight scenes, but the ending, look, if you haven't seen it, you're gonna have to see it. But the ending, I, I can't do it, not for me. So that is not my favorite. It's gonna be Matrix, all the Matrix series. Yeah. All right, what is your favorite lifting moment? Um, you know, honestly, it was probably the meet that I had in 2014. I was in medical school, I was on an OBGYN rotation doing nights, and uh, I signed up for this local meet uh, at the gym that I had trained at, and uh, totaled 17.95 at 198 pounds. I was in knee wraps. Uh, the weights they used were not terribly well calibrated, although, you know, at the time that was kind of powerlifting, and then also it was on a deadlift bar. But 17.95, I squatted 640, benched 430. Although my butt did come up in the air, they didn't red light me though, but I know that it did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honest with myself and then I pulled 725 and that was just putting that whole meet together I had a lot of fun and I still think about that meet uh, it was just a really good day and then uh, also 2015 a year later uh, Raw Nationals USAPL I ended up getting fourth there I actually did not perform very well did not sleep very well the night before I had some personal stuff going on but uh, you know got on the rally bus and uh, it was cool. It was cool to perform on that stage. It was like the first, they didn't really have prime time, but everybody was watching us because we had like all the heavy hitters in my flight. And it was really cool to take fourth out of almost a hundred competitors. Um, yeah, that was a good day. The question is, what can I do to boost recovery? And this is, I view this as the same question as like, what can I do to boost my immunity? Uh, the idea is that you can do these things to take your recovery and your uh, immune system to the next level, super physiological levels, and that's not really the case. There are things that promote like a well-functioning immune system and you know appropriate recovery, uh, and so that's the approach I'd like to take. I, I, instead of thinking of, about trying to boost your recovery, let's just try to maximize uh, your potential to recover. And so um, things that you would want to do. So one uh, diet needs to be on point, particularly that you're getting enough protein. That's 1.6 uh, grams uh, per kilogram body weight per day, at least uh, with some evidence going all the way up to 3.1 grams uh, per kilogram body weight per day. Uh, sleep is gonna be a big deal and that's very individualized, but seven, eight hours per night. You can listen to our sleep podcast. We go in depth on that, making sure you don't have sleep apnea or other parasomnias or other sleep issues. And the next thing uh, outside of that would actually be training more. So the way that you improve your training tolerance is to gradually train more and more and more. 
built a big base of training that includes includes aerobic training and also anaerobic training. So you got to do both uh, to get uh, get your training tolerance up. And so, yeah, training more, eating appropriately, sleeping right. That's that's how you boost your recovery. And really, just maximizing your uh, the potential you have to recover. question is who which person has impacted your life the most and uh, it's definitely got to be my dad my dad uh, he's my number one fan number one supporter I know it sounds corny but it's true like I'll, I wouldn't be where I'm at without my dad um, it, the cool thing about him is that he you know he gives it to me straight he he's never you know blown smoke up my up my rear about telling me oh you're this great athlete and this that whatever he's just like you're a hard worker and uh, that's how you end up um, you know succeeding so but if you don't let me pick the uh, cheese ball answer the I'm gonna pick um, this mentor that I had right before I went uh, to medical school is actually one of the reasons I went to medical school, ended up applying and kind of going through that process. Uh, Dr. Piper, great guy, he's a spine surgeon. Um, I actually coached him for a while and uh, it's cool watching him be able to squat and deadlift even though he had a back surgery and um, you know he didn't think he would ever be able to do that as a spine surgeon. So being able to take him uh, through, uh, through uh, some resistance training and getting him kind of out of the idea like oh you had a back problem you can't ever do this stuff again uh in his sixth decade of life that was really cool and he again similar to my dad he always felt you know he always kept telling me like you can do this you can go to med school you can be a doctor and uh yeah probably if it wasn't for that push i, I don't know that i would have done it but uh it was it was really cool so th those two probably the most uh, influential people in my life all right so the question is favorite thing to do outside the gym uh it's probably gonna be golf, but uh, I'm not just a one trick pony. So if it's not golfing, I wanna be cooking uh, or entertaining friends. That's uh, probably my second favorite thing to do after golfing. All right, the question is, what are the best accessory movements? So, you know, it, this assumes that somebody's probably a uh, barbell sport athlete and so they have specific lifts that they want to get up. Uh, I don't think that actually applies to most people watching this. Like if you haven't signed up for a powerlifting meet or a weightlifting meet, like I don't know that you need to restrain or constrain yourself to just a, uh, you know, squat bench deadlift. Um, there are other exercises out there. And so my overarching idea is that I want people to do a wide variety of different exercises. This not only helps like motor learning, so you get better at like doing movements and like knowing where your body is in space by doing different type of movements. Um, so it's like you get to uh, better, better outcomes that way. Also reduces the risk of injury from overuse and uh, also just makes you stronger uh, all around. So effectively strength is very specific and if you do a, a lot of different things, you build this broad base of strength that you can later apply specifically if you want to. And so the, the specific periods would be relatively short. So I like almost all <laughs> variations. Um, I think if you have good data, you respond relatively well or better to particular variations and performance, max strength performance on the big three are very important to you. You should definitely be keeping those records. Then those are the ones I would default to. Um, and I would, I would try to kind of build this exercise library of things that you prefer. So adherence will go up and that also you respond to. Um, but in general, if there's a big range of motion, easily, easy to load and like fairly similar to the exercise that you care about. Um, this is probably a good variation.